Hi, I'm Leo K. This is AC Syndicate, and I'm going to demonstrate the basics of high ground icons. High ground icons are a gameplay feature introduced to Assassin's Creed starting with Black Flag and fleshed out in Unity. They work a bit differently in each game, so let's look at how they work here. You'll notice that part of this building has a pillar of light emerging from it and an eagle circling around it. This tells me that this tall building is a viewpoint, even with my HUD off. If you haven't synchronized with a nearby viewpoint, high ground icons will not usually appear in the surrounding area, so first, let's take care of that. Since the helix is built on top of Animus technology, interacting with a viewpoint synchronizes the user's awareness of an area with the ancestral assassin's awareness. The historical assassin would have had to study this area for a long time, but after the Animus reads that information directly from the DNA sample, it can project high ground icons onto the world, immediately showing us where relevant activities and items are. Putting an icon in the center of your map lets you mark it without ever having to open your map or fiddle around with any menus. Let's look around for something closer to us to demonstrate that a bit more practically. This chest looks pretty good. Marking something via its high ground icon works the same way as marking something using your map. That means after you do it, the mark won't disappear until you get to whatever it is you marked. Once we're finished with the item or activity, we need to get back to the viewpoint and scan the area again. Sometimes high ground icons can appear while on rooftops, even without being on a viewpoint, but that's not very reliable. Perching on a synced viewpoint will display high ground icons every time, guaranteed, so that is the best way to go. Next, let's go collect this royal letter. Going for all of the items or activities closest to the viewpoint is a good thing to do for two reasons. First, it makes sense from a practical standpoint. You can get a more immediate reward and finish up some stuff quickly. Second, since we're closer to the viewpoint, we can more easily remember where it is without having to open our map to look for it. This helps us find it again on our way back. You can mark and unmark an icon, or mark another one whenever you want. Just center it on your screen and press the mark button. I could go for this pressed flower, but I feel like doing something a bit more interesting. Most people know how much I like my stealth, so let's do this Templar hunt. As I move toward it, its icon will stay marked until I get inside the target area. Like I said, marking a high ground icon is exactly the same thing mechanically as marking it on your map. So here we are at the Templar hunt. I can't use the rooftop approach that I'm usually so fond of, so I'll sneak toward these guards from the water. With their backs turned, they don't know they're about to die. I'll cover kill the brute, whistle to lure over his ally, and kill her too. I try to whistle and lure a gunner toward me, but the gunner enemy archetype does not investigate whistles by moving toward them, she just aim her gun at the source of the disturbance, so I take her out with a throwing knife. After killing a few of her henchmen, this target will come look at the dead bodies I've created, and while she's doing that, I'll lure the target to me with a whistle and assassinate her. The helix will now tell me to leave the area, and my goal now is to get back to the nearest viewpoint. On my way back though, I do get a little bit lost, and that's not ideal, but it's fine, and you'll see why. Climbing a building with the rope launcher, we can also observe the area surrounding us.
I like to zoom in by holding aim with one of the ranged weapons like a throwing knife. I know the basic appearance of the building we're looking for, so if I don't see it in the distance on the other side of the park, it's probably somewhere closer to the right of us. With a lot of fog in the way, I can't be sure, but I decide to go in that direction anyway, because that's what my gut tells me to do. As I run to it, I'll eventually see the gate, and we can get back to scouting out our next activity once I reach it. There's the peak of the building. There's the gate itself. Now playing this way is slower and more time consuming than playing the game normally, but it's also a really great way to memorize entire sections of the city, since you'll repeatedly be leaving from a specific point into multiple directions and returning to that point from multiple directions. This feature isn't talked about too often, but it can be pretty fun to play with, especially if you're trying to go HUDless and you're not a fan of having a bunch of stuff on your screen. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.